Welcome to the spread in essence football picks podcast. I'm Nesson.com's Mike Cole joined once again and as always by Nesson.com's Ricky Doyle. Ricky, happy Super Bowl. Hey, right back. Yeah, you made it to the finish line. Oh, how about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, with God as our witness, we have uh, we, we started this thing. That's actually what I maybe we can uh, we will reconvene a little bit later uh, in the offseason to kind of go over our uh, picks. But uh, we I do remember talking to you about it way back in September, or maybe even August. We were saying we were full of hope and energy and and much tanner and life was great it yeah. was still the summer and here we are in dreary old february with uh you know finally just limping across the finish line yeah but i'd like to give us some credit i think we've held up fairly well there were some ebbs and flows throughout the season but by and large i think physically we're, and mentally we're still yeah. standing and i think we're, we're in a good spot we are i i, I can't i can't argue with that we're here to make our picks it's uh it's a super bowl among other things really. um yeah, if there's a whole lot going on. I mean, this is a smorgasbord. This is our Super Bowl party. I guess it's not, you can't really uh, uh, see it on. on but on there the, is a tablecloth. Maybe there's a lot going on. There's, yeah. there's Cheez Its as far as the eye can see. <laughs> uh, we're going to get into a lot of that, uh, you know, fun, uh, if you want to call it that. Uh, we'll make our picks for the Super Bowl. Uh, we will do some prop bets. Everybody likes the prop bets this time of year. We'll do some, what would we do? MVP. We'll do oh, general discourse about the game. Yeah, and, and we don't want to give it all away, so stick no. around. You'll find so, out what we got up our sleeve. Yeah. I, I don't know if there are people joining us that, that don't typically join us this, uh, this, this time around. So, kind yeah, we're live. In. We're live. Yeah, doing a live. As far as I know, I mean, there's a chance that this <laughs> thing is, is is not live at all. But uh, either way, you know, the Chiefs are playing the 49ers. That's the Super Bowl. Super Bowl set. We kind of mentioned this last week. Went through it a little bit in kind of our review of the conference championship. I believe the number has stayed pretty consistent. I forget it was last week, but it opened at uh, 49ers one and a half point favorites. It's now two. I was kind of messing around earlier on the Ness and Bets live odds page. It looks like you can get two and a half at I was say, it's really in that one and a half to two and a half range. It's yeah, really so for, you know, week and a half now. I mean, you really kind of have to shop around. Oh, this is that reminds me. I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, the first Super Bowl that you and I can legally bet on inside of our home state. Very true. Yeah. Right. Uh, not, no, no, no. Last year, but it, it was in March. We wasn't didn't it? have mobile betting last year. Oh, that's uh, so right. That required you know to get out there and get the old slips. Yeah. So that's... that was uh, yeah, that was interesting. So I, mean, I was my not doing table that. Was littered with yeah. last year. Uh, fortunately, that will not be the case this year. Uh, yeah. So. Like I said, 49ers, Chiefs, uh, Niners laying two. We'll go, we'll use two for, for the sake of this argument. Total at 47 and a half. That has stayed pretty consistent. Uh, before we get into our picks, I'm just trying to run through the top, you know, top line stuff. Two of the best teams in football. Obviously, it's a Super Bowl. Kansas City finished the season second overall DVOA. Kansas, or did I say Kansas City? I meant to say San Francisco yep. if I didn't. They're second. Kansas City was fifth. Uh, Niners have the f- best offense in the league. Chiefs have a top 10 defense, top 10 offense. Niners have top five defense. It's, uh, it's the appropriate matchup. Yeah, I, I think know, so. The more, the more I, I think about this. <laughs> the more you ruminate on it? Yeah, it, it's, it's two best teams, right? Like, I, I guess you could have made the case. You could have made the case for either Kansas City or Baltimore last week. Baltimore is the only one. Yeah, like Detroit kind of felt like a pretender despite the fact yeah. that they kind of built that early lead. We talked about that last week as well in, in terms of how they completely pissed that away. But um, this game has the star power. On and off the field, what more do you want? Yeah, exactly. Really? I think it we feels have, like a big game, and that's yeah. all I ask for the Super Bowl, yep. really. We have Give me that feel. Sizable head coaches, both in, in name and st- uh, stature. Uh, a interesting quarterback matchup and, and just elite star power on both sides of the ball. Let's just get into it, I guess. Let's just make our picks. We're going to kind of run through our pick for the side, the total. Uh, we'll do an MVP pick, and then we'll get into some props. So um, what are you leaning here? What's your, who do you so, like? Uh, who do you like? I, I mean, I look, I, I really wanted – to take San Francisco this week. Yeah. Um, I feel like that is, by and large, the sharp play over the public it's play. It's smart play, probably. Uh, probably. Do you want to call it that? I just don't have the stomach for it. Um, you know, I've been banging the Kansas City drum for a while, really going back to the middle of the season when things weren't looking so hot. Um, sort of the, you'll figure it out. Always take the points when you have the opportunity. The Patriots 2.0, whatever narrative you want to throw out there. And yet I threw all that out the window last week <laughs> against Baltimore. Um, and the more that week went on, the more conviction I had that the Ravens were going to win that game. I'm not doing it again. Um, we often talk about, you know, the, the path to victory. For the Chiefs, they don't need a path, right? They, they're equipped institutionally more so than anything um, to play whatever game comes their way, be it a shootout, rock fight, or otherwise. Um, yeah, I, I, 
yeah, I can't go against them here. This is a very, it's a very simplistic way of looking at things, but like the quarterback uh, advantage obviously weighs heavily there. So yeah, give me the Chiefs. Yeah, I'm in a similar boat where it was, I have, and I, I hate myself for doing this because it feels the very opposite of sharp where, oh, it's completely is, but like I've been betting into a, the Chiefs. If there's a unique case yeah, I know. of where I feel like you're, it's okay to be with the public side of things. This is it. Well, it's not even it's not even that I don't want to be part of the uh, on the public side. It's that I've been kind of what you were saying, like I've been betting into the Chiefs, picking against the Chiefs for so long, kind of just being like this team is not the same as it was. There are flaws. It's not as talented as it's been in the past. Even Mahomes, you could argue for aggression, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I was looking for reasons to pick against them, and now it's just like it gets to the final game of the season. I'm finally just like, well, I guess I'll go with the Chiefs now. Yeah. Like, so it does kind of feel like I've talked sure. myself into just jumping sides. Even see, though, well, see, I'm on the other side because I was on them for a bit. Like, yeah, that's fair. I think everybody's undervaluing the yeah. Chiefs, and then I I go against my better wisdom last week and it bit me in the ass oh, so that is that is now easy. i'm trying it's like a penance if you will i'm trying to make up for it this week if i can i will say so from like a strictly we should talk about football at yeah, some point so. here in terms of just being morons but i do think i look at it, it boils down to me for this or boils down to this for me i saw the packers and i saw the lions give the 49ers some troubles especially on the ground I don't think the Chiefs' rushing attack is as balanced as either of those two teams, or it's not as prominently featured, obviously, because the other teams don't have Patrick Mahomes. But I think they have a chance to, to find success on the ground against a, a Niners team that isn't, uh, isn't especially stout against the run. They don't really want to play run defense. They're a team that's built to get an early lead and then let their pass rushers pin their ears. So I do think the Chiefs can find some success on the ground, especially with Isaiah Pacheco. I think... If they are able to grab a lead at any point in the game, especially if they build an early lead, I trust them so much more than I do Jordan Love in his second playoff game with Matt LaFleur as his head coach or Jared Goff and Dan Campbell. Like, I don't think the Chiefs are destined to make the same sort of mistakes that the teams before them did yeah. after exposing a flaw for the, for the 49ers. Yeah, that, that Lions game does not play out that way against the no chiefs. <laughs> it, it plays out <laughs> like you know, the, the chiefs don't make one of those mistakes it plays out on the avalanche of mistakes it plays out Detroit exactly made. the way that the afc championship game did where the chiefs were able to build an early lead and just anaconda grip vice grip whatever yeah. you know, like and just yeah, it might, it might not be out. pretty no. you know obviously this isn't this isn't the super bowl of what year was that 2019 mm -hmm. these, two, these two teams played so, yeah. you know obviously a much different chiefs team uh but to your point i i agree with that i think that I think they're going to have success on the ground, and I'm not even entirely sure it's going to be line it up and run it down there, you know, down their throw with Isaiah Pacheco. Like I, I see like some wide receiver runs coming into play here, like down yeah. near the red zone. You know, we've seen the the offensive ingenuity from them before. Um, I just think that Kansas City has the ability to get creative here, which kind of plays into, you know, you mentioned San Francisco just wants to sort of get upfield, yeah. create havoc in the backfield. I think Kansas City can do enough to mitigate that. Probably, yeah. And I think you, the other thing, too, is on the other side, the Chiefs do have a, a... I would say their run defense is not overly strong. That being said, we saw them... Well, they didn't have to really make adjustments last week. The, the Ravens kind of just did it for them by not running the ball. They probably won't be as lucky this week. I do... Maybe this is a blind trust, especially in a Springfield guy. I think... Steve Spagnola is the type of coordinator who has a demonstrated pass of being able to make in-game adjustments. That's where I think they really have flourished defensively, where maybe it's not... Well, I guess they, they've, they've increased their, their talent level over the years, especially with the draft and things that we've talked about in past weeks. They're still a little young, but he has a really good sense of how to use those guys. I think they do a pretty good job here of throwing some weird looks at Brock Purdy that maybe he hasn't seen. Makes and makes Purdy kind of adjust to that. I just I like Kansas City's ability to be a little more amorphous and kind of malleable or kind of yeah, yeah. play to the game, not necessarily have a better game. It, like plan. I said, they don't. There's not a direct path that they have to take to victory. Like th no matter how this game shakes yeah. out, they're capable of winning it. I don't feel like that's the case with the Niners. I feel like with them, there's mu a much more like you know they got to come out. The first half, first couple of drives, assert themselves offensively, and 
sort of control the tempo of the game. Like, I, I understand that flies in the face of what we saw the, yeah. the past couple of weeks in those playoff wins. But like you said, no, yeah, Kansas does. City's not going to make those mistakes. No. So I think it's paramount for them to come out to an early lead, whereas Kansas City, even if they fall behind, honestly, I, that's a situation where I'd maybe even look to live bet this game. So I Similar actually... Similar to last year against... I, Philadelphia. I was going to get into this as we kind of dive into more prop bets or just kind of how we want to attack this game betting wise. One thing I've circled and I haven't yet made the bet, but I probably will after this is it, you can get this at FanDuel plus 800. It's basically the Chiefs or excuse me, the 49ers lead at halftime. Chiefs win the game, which I like because I, like I think lot, that yeah. the Niners Shanahan is almost like obsessive with how badly he wants to score and get that those middle eight minutes or whatever between the first half and the second half. And I just think you look at, I think they're going to probably look good early on. And then eventually Kansas city makes those adjustments. And over the last two weeks or last two games in the playoffs, the chiefs have allowed 10 total second half points. They were the yeah. best second half defense, the entire NFL for the entire season. So I think they're, yeah, I, yeah. It, there's live betting opportunities. There's these weird, you know, like I said, this, this certain Niners, Chiefs first half, second half thing. I was there are say, some, tri- you know, some intriguing options there. To- like total wise, I don't know where you stand on this, but that that might be one of those things where that's worth a look if you want to split it up into the two halves. Like yeah. I-, I might look for like a first half over and a second half under to when you know you get past that sort of initial wave of yeah. the 49ers offense. Um, the Chiefs offense. I mean, they've played to the under in the second half virtually all season, especially in the fourth quarter. If you want to, you know, go a little deeper into it. Um, yeah, I think that their ability to to run out the clock, bleed the clock yep. at the end like that, I think that could come into play. So that's sort of how I would look at this. You might see a, a a huge swarm of scoring at the beginning and then sort of things settle down, which is kind of opposite to what you see sometimes in games like this. And the other thing, too, with that, kind of talking about like the basically running away and hiding in the second half, even if it gets to third and eight, we've seen in the past, like you, if you're on the Chiefs side late in that game, you're going to feel a lot better. Like the... I mean, we saw it last week. What was it? Third and seven, third and eight. The Chiefs decide, hell, let's just chuck it deep. And they th- you know, Marquez Val- Valdez Scantling for however many 50 yards, game's over. Like, you still have that in your back pocket if right. you're the Chiefs late in this game where I don't trust Brock Purdy to make a similar play when they need it. So, like, the Chiefs, if this game plays out the way we think it will, which is a, a close, close game, like, the Chiefs are always going to be live late, especially with, with Mahomes. So. I'm sure we'll get into this throughout the course of the show, but Brock Purdy. Um, I, like we've touched on him over the past yeah. several weeks, obviously. Um, it was my thing with them. It's like, I am by no means a Brock Purdy hater. Like if anything, I'm the opposite. I just think though, as it relates to this game to go back to the initial point, yep. like there's, as far as the quarterbacks go, there's one known quantity in this game and he just happens to be when all is said and done, maybe the best to ever do it. So yeah, I'll take the known quantity in that case. And also meant to mention if you're, uh, you're so you're on the chiefs too right yeah i am yeah I've, uh, I've not money line or you you want the you want the two points or whatever you end up yeah playing. money line yeah i would take the money line what is i should have looked that up do you have it off the top of your head uh, i believe it was like one plus it's, 110 it's like a dollar but um, yeah, basically even but i mean essentially plus 110 it, it, super bowls we've seen for you know as an extensive track record now whatever team wins yeah. typically covers um Especially in a, you know, a game with a, a number this tight. Um, this will be, let's see, the 31st Super Bowl with the spread of six points or fewer. Um, the straight-up winner has covered the spread in 29 of the previous 30 instances. There you go. Um, you want to whittle it down even more. 23rd Super Bowl with spread of four points or fewer. Straight-up winner is covered in all 22 thus far. 11 of them being favorites, 11 underdogs. So if you like <clears> the Chiefs, <throat> might as well just take the money line. And if you're playing a week-long Super Bowl drinking game, which I do not suggest doing, uh, here's an Andy Reid on rest tidbit for okay. a trend for you. Not counting week one, week ones, because uh, there's plenty of rest going into week one. I do advise, if you are participating in that game, though, to drink them out of these <laughs> lovely Super Bowl cups that we've managed to secure. <laughs> the, your business scheme that you were talking about before we got in. We're, here, we're moving to Vegas and getting rich as balls after this. Anywho. So, uh, when playing with 13-plus days of rest, he is 31 and 7 straight up in his career, 26 and 3 in games when he has Patrick Mahomes or Donovan McNabb as his, as his quarterback. The only losses were against the Eagles this season, and the other two were Super Bowl losses to Tom Brady. I don't see Tom Brady anywhere in this game. I like that, their chances then. Nah, so. I mean, might be in Vegas, but he's 
I can read between the lines. All right, let's run through the under. <laughs> so I'm on the under. Yeah, okay, yeah. I was going to say, let's run through the total. Uh, 47 and a half. That number, when it first came out, felt high to me. As I've dug in more, I, I think it's too high. I'm, I'm, I think this is a low-scoring, grind-it-out type of game. Even if, like, highest-scoring quarter, first quarter, is on the table for me. And then after that, I think it, everybody settles in and it just turns into a rock fight. Yeah. No, I, uh, I totally agree. Um, well, that's it for us. Yeah, we'll week. see you uh, next season. Yeah. Uh, no, I, like, it, it, it is. like the, the, the game script feels like one where, you know, we've seen the one thing about this Chiefs offense as they've sort of have built an identity throughout the course of the season is you're seeing that they're leaning more on the ground game. Yeah. Um, you know, these neutral game situations, you come out running on first down, um, leaning on Isaiah Pacheco, as you mentioned earlier, like I think the volume will be there for him. Um, I mean, I, I think that that game against the Ravens, like you looked up and after that first drive and you're like, is Lamar ever going to get on the yeah. field? Like, I, I think that you probably you try to have a similar game plan here. Like, keep that 49ers offense on the sideline as long as possible. Um, like, if you're San Fran, you're sort of falling in that same boat as well. Keep Patrick Mahomes on the sideline as long as possible. I think it's just both teams' uh, attack is going to play into a situation where we got a running clock. Um, Unless they're breaking, like, 60-yard touchdowns. Yeah, and I just I don't see that with either one of these two, defenses. Two pretty good tackling teams. Uh, you also, too, you look at the pace. Uh, the Chiefs ran the, I mean, they were like seventh fewest plays per game. Uh, there no, excuse me, the Niners. And then the Chiefs are middle of the pack. So teams that they don't love to play super up tempo, not fast. Uh, I can run through a couple trends real quick. The Chiefs 16 and six and 14 to the under trend. this season, nine and 10, the Niners were nine and 10 to the under, uh, KC played five games this season total that went over that number. They've been a relatively low scoring unit the entire year uh four of the last five super bowls have gone under and when the under hits it goes way under the last 10 super bowl unders missed by an average of 13.8 points basically missing by two touchdowns a lot of that was kind of do you remember the to do a quick 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 aside yeah the total for the rams uh patriots super bowl the second one uh 52 and a half it's like 57 and a half so that kind of messes up the numbers in here but still when they go when they go low they go low so uh that's that's where i'm at with that i like the under 47 and a half half. it's crazy like i know you know if you see something in the 50s now it's it's pretty wild yeah right look at late in the season i mean we had i had to double check it when i saw it totals landing below 30 yeah 28 28 28, 9 29 and a half so uh who's your mvp pick then or so like i guess if the Chiefs win, more likely than not, I mean, the, the odds back this up, I do think Mahomes is going to win the MVP. If I'm betting it, I'm going a different direction. I don't know you about kinda you. You kind of have to, yeah. right? Well, so, well, first of all, let's start with this. If, so going back to, I said, if you like the Chiefs, take the money line. If you like the Chiefs, you should probably just take Patrick Mahomes and win MVP, right? Like I, it, yeah. There's a pretty good chance if they plus 140 win this versus game plus outright, 110, yeah. So, that might be where... Maybe that's the way to go if you like the 49ers, too. Like, I know the Niners have more elite guys outside of their quarterback, but if you're just, you might as well I mean, just roll with it's Brock Purdy at 2-1. More, more often than not, it's going yeah. to be the quarterback. Actually, so, so since 2000, MVP award has gone to the winning team's quarterback, 62.5% of the time. There you go. Um, after that, basically the, the top wide receiver is about just over 20% of the time, which is always a tricky one because it's like... You know how much of that falls on the the quarterback versus the receiver. Like the Patriots had that one where, well, obviously Edelman won the MVP, yeah. but also uh, the year where James White very easily could have won it with the you know the total receptions that he mm-hmm. had. Um, so yeah, I, I think Mahomes is the pick if you like Kansas City. Probably Purdy's the pick if you like San Francisco, but that's boring. Um, see, I, I from a value standpoint. Because, I, like I said, I think the volume might be there. The I, Isaiah Pacheco at 35 to 1. Jesus Christ. But, but I'm looking a little further down. All right. Rasheed Rice, 60 to 1. Uh, this goes back to, like I said, the, the top wide receiver, usually about 20% of the time. Um, I could see a scenario where, you know, he, he catches a few balls behind the line of scrimmage, ends up turning it into a big game. So you're seeing, like, you're seeing his skills on display mm-hmm. there um, so that, you know, you get some, some chunk yardage. Uh, that's just one where if I'm looking down the board, total dart throw, 
that's probably the one that stands out for me. Especially yeah, the rapport that they've built over the last six, seven, eight weeks. I uh, I do have a Rasheed Rice thing to get to eventually uh, when we get the first touch on Excellent. score. Right. But I mean, it's kind of maybe that maybe the better way to go is to just grab him with the MVP. You get a little more value, a lot more value. Uh, for me, I had Pacheco written down at thirty-five to one. That was the first one that it, the second the odds came out jumped out to me. It's like one where it's just I'm completely sticking to my Your way. Narrative. Yeah, my narrative, how I think this game gets played out, where. 21 to 17. Mahomes is flustered by a strong pass rush. They can't totally get the game going through the yeah, air. He breaks two touchdowns and breaks 160, even like a 50 yarder. He ends the game with 125, two touchdowns. Like Mahomes would have to be a really, really pedestrian game not to get yep. it in that case. But if like if the only touchdowns they score are on the ground, maybe there's there's a lot of I, outs for 35 look, to one. I had this thought watching that 49ers Lions game when the Lions were just consistently getting chunk plays on the ground, like my initial thought was Isaiah Pacheco is going to have a field day with this yeah. defense because the, the style in which he runs too. Yeah. Right. Like if he gets to the second yeah. level and he puts his head down you're getting a few it's extra mean. yards. Yeah. Yeah. He like, it really has like the, 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 the offense is as far as it has come this season. A lot of it stems from what he's been able to bring to the table. And so, yeah, especially at a number like that, 35 to one, like if you're looking for somebody outside of Mahomes, it's just, that seems like the guy who's going to have the most touches and the most opportunities to do things that end up being MVP worthy. I will sprinkle in a couple of random picks as we go. I have made that I've made uh, bets. I've made. Yeah, so you said far. you were all over the board. Well, I've made three bets so far. Two of them are MVP bets. Chris Jones, Print 100 them all out. Yeah. Chris Jones, 140 to one MVP and Nick Bosa, 101 to win MVP. Um, I was looking at, it was a good story on pro football focus that kind of pointed out that especially on, the other side uh, with San Francisco's defense was Bosa. Uh, they have Joe Tooney seems like he's unlikely to play. He's got a pack injury. And Jawan Taylor is going to be tasked with guarding Nick Bosa for the most part. And Jawan Taylor is not very good, according to Pro Football Focus. This is one of the biggest mismatches in the entire game. Then on the other side, Chris Jones has 85 quarterback pressures, is the fourth most at a 15% pressure rate. Again, if we're looking at a 21 17, 20 to 13, like a really, really low scoring game, yeah. defensive struggle. Maybe there's a two and a half sacks, six tackles, a fumble, something like that. For 140 and 100 to one for like two of the best players on the field, I know it's probably just lighting money on fire. I, I had to, to like very little, like, I, like Coke money on it. Not that it's, Coke, but <laughs> Coca Cola money. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> well, that would have been a far more sizable uh, bet. Yeah, uh, never. The unemployment line. Uh, no, I like those because it, we mentioned like the amount of star power and you know, offensive skill players that are in this game. Yeah. Like, there's a chance that like everybody sort of offsets each other, right? There is. There is. Like, it too, it yeah. opens the door for somebody on the defensive side it's who makes a play like talk that. about like MVP voting in a season where is one guy going to take votes away from another guy? Yeah, on the same like team you know, like if like Debo that, Samuel yeah. has 75 yards and Brandon Ayuk has 72 yards, it's like, well, you know, it's not going to give it to either one of them. So the uh, the other thing is <clears throat> the Kelsey number standing strong at 17. I know he's been bet down over the week, but I imagine that's the other thing. If you want to bet anything wow. Kelsey related, you should probably do it right now because. It does just feel like he's like the most famous guy in the field. So yeah. people with pulling up the app on Sunday are going to probably just load up I mean, on his I mean, props are, and well, his MVP. Also, we made it, what, 15, 20 minutes into this thing without mentioning Taylor Swift? We're not completely beholden to that narrative. Yeah, but we'll also, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to it at some oh, we'll point. We'll talk to it occasionally, yeah. Uh, but hey, or the reminds me. Swifties might just not be old enough to bet, right? There is that, but I, yes. But my wife is a Swifty. I won't say how oh. old she is. She's definitely old enough to bet. If she were to make, I mean, she follows football. So if the number swings on Sunday, I'm going to attribute it to the coal household. It's no, she yeah. I mean, she backs yeah, up the she's, truck. she's using the coke money for that. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but like, I do think <laughs> casual fans, men, women, whatever. Like, if you've watched two or three football games this season, you've probably watched yeah. a Chiefs game and you know about the Travis Kelsey thing. You're just like, well, I will bet that guy to win MVP. You're telling me I can bet. Ten dollars and I win one hundred and seventy. Like I think that's gonna be, but I think there's a chance for it too. Also, well, everything I just said about like Rasheed Rice. Yeah, right. Travis exactly. Kelsey, obviously, yeah. I just that's where you you gotta look at the number a little bit. But to, yeah. but seventeen to one, it's like oh, you yeah, go, I, you want to go there and I'd rather do I'm that than gonna this, gonna this props. Or fight whatever, you so. too hard on it. 
Good. I don't want to fight about it. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's do some other stuff. Um, yeah. So we're <laughs> we're on the. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff here. Uh, do you want to do props? Do you want to do? Do you want to do the fun props? Do you want to do player props? I, let's do it. Player props because up. we. Uh, yeah. This is the. Uh, what is this? The. Uh, prop pot. The prop pot. We will call it. Kind of like you know, it's a big big weekend for crock pots. Yep. So, uh, yeah, you're a big Crock-Pot guy. Love huh? Crock-Pot. What do you got going on? Uh, I don't mean, I don't have to get carried away, but you got anything special planned? Smoking. Ooh. Smoking, probably. Smoking, you got, you got Coke, you're smoking. <laughs> I I'm going to stay away from it. I'm going to have my, I'm going to have my, uh, I'm going to load up on Coke Dude, for the weekend, and then Dude, I'm going to be smoking on the way to the, <laughs> going from the cool household. Uh, probably brisket, did ribs <laughs> last year. Something like that. Yeah. It, we don't know. It's just me and the family. There's no major thing. So it makes it nice. I can pretty much buy whatever I have and not feel well, obligated to flash dive a few in too days much. Too, you know? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yep. So, all right. Uh, yeah. Let's do props. So, what do we got here? We got uh, footballs and a old bucket. Yep. Each all of right. them has a, uh, a prop bet on them. Sure. So, we'll just, we'll I'm just pull it, those up. Yeah. Do a little rotation and uh, we right. will we'll have at it. We'll just, we'll just rattle off our over unders. Uh, yeah, where we're leaning. You'll go first here with uh, Christian McCaffrey rushing yards. Do you have it pulled up? I'm trying to find. Uh, let's see. Here. We did not totally think this one through, so we are in a little bit of a bind here. I was going based off the numbers that you dropped. Okay. In, uh, to our little chat there earlier. In which so case, what's the number? so what do you got, Christian McCaffrey? Yeah, Christian McCaffrey Over rushing yards. Ninety-one and a half. Ninety-one and a half. What do you think? I am gonna go. McCaffrey's a tough one because and that's not that an answer. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because he does that's so it. much where it's like it's hard to just completely bank on his rushing yards. It feels like he doesn't go over that number a ton. Well, maybe he does. He had 90 last week, 98 the week before. It's 60. a sneaky amount. Yeah. I had the same general. Where it's like, like he does thought. everything. So how can he be, you know? Uh, so I, I, might, I might lean over. Uh, no, I'll go under. <laughs> okay. Way to, way to change on the fly. Under fits the narrative, though, um, right, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just think that maybe that he might put up a big total in the first half, and you think he's going to breeze by it. And then <laughs> as the game changes a little bit and they offer us to throw a little bit more, that's when that things start to balance out. Keep but, in mind, too, like, I don't know how we, where you stand on this, but I come at every number, like, initially leaning under. <laughs> Because, like, I just feel like... That's the sharper way to go. Yeah, like, I just feel like they're going to be, especially in the cases of the star players, of you, which I It's the same thing. Them. If you want to bet overs, I feel like you got to do it now because everybody likes to bet overs. Everybody's on overs. There's nothing worse than betting an under and just having to root for against it. So it's like, unless I have a really strong, like, think there's a huge edge there, generally just going to stay away from these probably, but yeah. that's no fun either. So I'll take the under on McCaffrey. Okay. Uh, my turn. turn, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Travis Kelsey receiving yards. Over, under, I believe it's at 71, 71 and a half. half, which I think has gone up pretty considerably. That makes sense. Uh, so he had 11 catches, 116 yards last week. He had five catches for 75 yards against the Bills and seven catches for 71 He's yards He's been a lock for Dolphins. this number basically for his entire postseason. I period. am going against my best judgment with that number over and i don't like it for a lot of the reasons that we just talked about but i do think when it gets down to nut cutting time that's the guy you go to and yeah. all it takes honestly is one like how many catches does he have on that first drive last week he got all those numbers in the first he, half really like so say I, he might have eclipsed his receptions and receiving right. yards totals in the first half or it was very very close he's so pushing up against it i think that's it's at oh actually uh fanduel says it's still 71 and a half okay. so yeah, I'm going to go over slightly. I don't feel good about it because you have to imagine that's going to be a major focal point of that uh, defensive game plan. But uh, still, I'm going to go under. Old faithful. I'll, I'll most certainly be kicking myself in the gluteus maximus and uh, come probably by 7.15 on yeah. Sunday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're probably going to do that no matter what. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Uh, long before then, that's for This sure. one's an interesting one. Brock Purdy passing yards. Uh, what did we have it at? 245 and a half. Over under Brock Purdy passing yards, 245 and a half. Over. Uh, I think this is a case of 
like I mentioned, I think they're going to be throwing late. God, I don't know. They're going to be throwing late to get back in this thing. And I think, you know what? A lot of it, too, we mentioned the Christian McCaffrey factor and his ability to do a lot of different things. Yeah. Like, that might be, if he lands the under on the rushing yards, probably might go over on the receiving yards, in which case that's another notch for Brock Purdy. He might have a lot of uh, dump-offs to him. These numbers are... Maybe I'm just completely. There's a chance I'm completely underselling everything with the 49ers. Yeah, but I 267, 252, 230 in a whatever game, 255 on Christmas against the Ravens. Threw for 368 uh, early December against Seattle. 314 against the Eagles. 333 against the Bucks. So this is a thing where you can I'm get going- to the end of the game, and you look, and he's got about 320 passing yards. But I don't know, like if it's necessarily going to look as pretty as some of those other games. Like, I'm, I think they're, he's going he's gonna to get there in a way that it, some of them might be empty. I'm leaning under. So, All right. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I guess I don't think the 49ers should get their asses kicked, apparently. Rasheed Rice, receiving yards. I, I, I lay the, 67 and a half. I hand it off to you. I pitch it to you. It's 67 and a half. I know you had a, uh, some developing under. thoughts. Taking the him. under. We'll go quick. Uh, I think they want to... Uh, Mahomes' lowest average depth of target for his entire career this year, which is basically they're throwing a lot more short passes than they ever have in his career. There's not a really deep threat outside of MVS, and he even he's obviously not very sure-handed. With, uh, with Rice, I think a lot of it is you know, within five yards of the line of scrimmage one way or the other. I think you're asking him to break a lot of tackles. The 49ers have the lowest missed tackle rate, or it's one of the best Missed tackle rates in the entire NFL. They tackle very well. I think they're going to get to him, take that away. I will go under here uh, just because I don't think they're going to have him involved in a lot of deep stuff or inter- even intermediate stuff. So I think um, that's going to get snuffed out. I don't think he's, I think he's going to have an impact in the game, but I just yeah. don't think he's going to have a huge uh, day with receiving yards. I'll go over. Uh, they've used him a little bit more down. We kind of have to go over because uh, he's yeah. your MVP. Um, as the season's gone on, I think they've, They've taken some more chances. So all I'm really looking for is one big chunk play downfield. Give me like a 25-yard gain, and we're cooking with gas. Debo receiving yards. Debo Samuel receiving yards over under 57 and a half. Uh, ooh. Let's say under. You might leave this game hurt. I think he goes over. I think he goes way over. I think he's their best player. Not yep. even sure, really sure why. I just think see. I I tend to put think... him in the slot. I think he's he's gonna do a lot of different things. Also, too, you got to consider with a guy like that coming in motion, a shovel pass. That's technically a forward pass yeah, that turns yeah. into sixteen yards. I don't, I don't know. All right. I guess it really depends on. Like that's a tough one to figure out who's gonna go off. See, uh, Debo or Ayuk. Yeah. Like who? Like I just that, always lean Debo because he's the more impactful better. player. But yeah. But I, Ayuk's pretty maybe Ayuk's the way to go. Everybody's sleeping on him. All right, Patrick Mahomes passing yards over <laughs> under two hundred and sixty-two and a half. Let me pull up my numbers because I actually dived into this. This is a probably going to be a bet for me in the game. I'm going under. Uh, again, this is very much within the narrative. I think it's going to be a low-scoring, ground-heavy game. I think bulk of their success will come on the ground. He ranked 18th of 32 qualified quarterbacks in air attempt yards per game and ranked 26th in completed passing air yards per game. They just don't throw a, a ton downfield. It, the 49ers' fourth lowest missed tackle percentage is what I was looking for. Uh, KC was second in yards after catch. They thrive on it. If the 49ers can take that away, there goes even more opportunity for them to get a ton of passing yards. And I also think they could have some problems blocking the front uh, of the Niners. And maybe he's in a little bit of a... I think I'm, I would lean, lean under on his uh, passing yards and maybe over on his rushing yards. I'm with you. I'll go under. You look at his playoff totals, 262, 215, 241. Hasn't eclipsed this mark since the December win over the Patriots, 23 for 305. Under. Joey Bosa sack, I guess, just yes or no. Over, under, zero. Joey Bosa, I will say or no. Nick Bosa, Nick Bosa I will Christ. say sure, why not? <laughs> God damn. Uh, you mentioned the, the, you know, the offensive line. going to do that. Um, you know, the, uh, it. Both tackles really a I don't question like, mark for the Chiefs. So I think he can get home for I don't like that he's already complaining. He was a beast in that game. I know, he had two sacks yeah. against the Lions. Uh, that was he just, kind of took over that game at one point. He didn't have a sack dating back to December 17th going into that game. No, I don't like him at all. That's yeah. Not to get personal. But <laughs> for various reasons. He's just kind of a <laughs> twerp. Well, not a twerp. He's massive. Yeah, he he's could, a good football player, he though. He murder me. Uh, without that. even thinking twice. No, he's very good. Yeah, I mean, he's playing in the Super Bowl. He has to be good. So uh, it's your turn. It's my turn? Yeah. How many we got left? Yeah, three. 
Three? Maybe yeah. we, I think we might have screwed up the numbers at some point. Uh, no, sorry. I don't know. But you said Joey Bosa sack? Joey Bosa, yeah. Uh, Nick Bosa sack? Nick Bosa sack, yeah. Oh, I, well, you got, you got Nick Bosa sack here as well, so. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. I guess it is twice. Frank Clark sack. <laughs> Uh, nah. That's one of the, yeah, I think he, well. uh, Isaiah Pacheco rushing yards. I'm just going to skip right over the 67 side. and a half. I'm going over. I mean, it fits the narrative. I think he's the MVP. Yeah, we got to go over. Right? Yeah. I can't backtrack. Yeah, out. It just might as well throw out the first 35 minutes of this show right. if I get yeah. under. So, yeah, over. And then, Round uh, pound, baby. Kittle receiving yards. I don't really know what the number is. I think it's pretty low. Kittle, did we write this one down? We didn't write this one down. No, I don't have that written down either. It's, I think he goes under, though. Yeah, I I think they're more apt to lean on Debo and Brandon Ayuk in this game and McCaffrey, like I said, out of the backfield. You know, Kittle's had a he's had a weird year. He's had a weird you know, like it's kind of just last couple of years. Yeah. Like he's I think his impact is still felt. Like if he's not out there, you, you pro that's the thing with him, right? Like I feel like you notice it more now when he's not out there because of some of the things that they're unable to do with him not on the field yeah. than when he's out there and he's just kind of silently like making an impact in the run game yeah. and things of that nature. It's not like the big splash plays. 47 and a half. Yeah, I think I, I, think I might lean under. You know what's funny? Yeah. I, would go, I might go under and then go over on his longest reception being 20 and a half yards. Like I think it's one play, and that's kind of it for him. Right. Yeah. So. Get a couple uh, George Kittle first touchdown score bets this year. I don't know why. It's just, sure. I think, may, you know what? It's probably because they had a lot of uh, standalone games. Yeah. So that's just a good way to get in on the action. And I don't know. I have a thing for tight ends, I guess. Do you want me to run through my actual stuff that I like, or do you want to just get into the goofy I stuff? I would, uh, yeah, I'm dying to hear it because you would. You I will speed through. When you speed came through by some of this stuff. Earlier, so. All right. First touchdown score. Big market. People love it. Rasheed Rice. 10-1. to 1. He gets 15% of Kansas City's red zone targets per game. Highest of anyone in this game. That's including the playoffs. First touchdown score. Obviously, you got to be the first team to score. First touchdown. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, as we mentioned, loves to defer. Almost always defers. Uh, and then you go look at the Chiefs. Since 2021 divisional round, eight straight playoff games with points on opening drive. Six touchdowns, two field goals. Five touchdown passes, one rushing touchdown for Mahomes. They like to throw it in the end zone in this. Uh, so I think there's Value there at ten to one. Also, like Justin Watson, thirty-one to one. Four uh, percent of the red zone target share. Three of his twenty-seven catch touchdowns went, or three of his twenty-seven catches went for touchdowns, and five of his seven career touchdowns are from inside the ten. Uh, I like that as a thirty-one to one first-time touchdown score. Anytime touchdown score. Blake, well, so real oh, quick, can I interject? Yeah. Uh, so, because I was going to ask you as part of our, you know, uh, uh, prop little prop pot here. Of if you had a, a take on the jersey number of the first touchdown score being over under twenty two and a half, which basically is oh. Christian McCaffrey's number twenty three, so he is the bar. Yeah, uh, and the two guys you we just mentioned weird... are on different sides of it, so I don't know if you have a, a has... strong lean there one way or the other. Uh, so basically, if I would go. I would go under. Basically, yeah. if you're under. going under, under, you're getting Rasheed Rice, Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Nicole Hardman, uh, the two quarterbacks. No, Mahomes. What was the uh, number? Twenty-two and a half. Debo. Uh, yeah, yeah. Debo Ayuk. Yeah, that's. Uh, nice. So yeah, so you're, you're basically get, you're betting getting a lot of options. Basically, Kelsey if you, and Kelsey Kittle. McCaffrey, or in, in Kittle, yeah, or Blake Bell. Well, it was an anytime touchdown score. Hey, there we go. 30 to 1. Uh, the Chiefs are using two tight end sets in the playoffs, like at two times the rate they used in the regular season. The last three weeks, his offensive snap counts were 20, 16, and 16. Maybe they throw in the wrinkle here, you know, like off a you know, bunch of weird stuff going on down around the goal line. He did catch a touchdown on opening night against the Lions, too. So he, he has found the end zone before. I, I was going to say, like, just generally speaking, like, I would poke around with some of the more obscure chiefs offensive touchdown type props like, I also, i'm not like not really sure how to completely describe it i guess the best i can do but like i don't know like if you want to throw up a hail mary like throw a little dart throw like maybe like an offensive lineman catching a touchdown you can get in get in on the octopus so, or something total number of players to have a passing attempt this is my yearly bet i love, this, I love, this, love this one over two and a half 
plus 160. I'm going over. I think I, as I was like writing this out, I was like, I think I had this last year for the same reasoning that Travis Kelsey threw a touchdown pass in a playoff game like three years ago now. <laughs> yeah. and I just keep going back I was to it. say, I think you've probably had it every year. But uh, so he threw a touchdown in the playoffs two years ago. They've run trick plays with McKinnon and Tony throwing passes this season. Debo also threw a pass for them uh, as well. Uh, I like San Francisco, successful fourth down conversion. Yes, minus 106. I don't think they can trust their kicker, Jake Moody, which is a big storyline in this game is I think uh, the uh, Harrison Butker situation is far more dependable for Kansas City than it is for San Francisco. I think they finally are just like, screw it. We don't want to deal with it. Um, I wish I could parlay miss field goal plus 210 with the San Francisco successful fourth down conversion because I think Shanahan's gonna be like, I'm not doing this. I'm just going for it. The Butker-Moody debate, it's a, that's the known quantity uh, discussion that I didn't mention at the beginning. That's, right? Yeah, right. One who's had a big kick in the Super Bowl and one who's... A little shaky. Both teams successful fourth down conversion two plus two ninety. That's you know teams go for these. They are not super aggressive, but it's the Super Bowl, you know. So uh, Mahomes interception no minus one hundred five. Has he's thrown one interception since the Patriots game and hasn't thrown a turnover worthy pass since week sixteen. That's insane. Yeah, that I know. Second stat. That, it's nuts. <laughs> uh, Brock Purdy over twelve and a half rushing yards. I think again there's gonna be pressure. He's gonna take off. The Chiefs love to blitz. Just run out where the blitz came from if you can get uh, get around the initial uh, rush. So that's my those are my props that I'm looking at too. All I, right. Sorry to rush through those, but no, I like it. Very informative. Oh, and then the other bet that I have made <laughs> is like about Chiefs plus two and a half parlayed with Scotty Scheffler to win the Waste Management oh, Phoenix Open uh, as a ten to one bet. So I'm getting basically, well, the more I think about it, it's not great, but it's <laughs> whatever. So all right. Uh, let's get into the, the fun stuff before we get out yeah, of here. Yeah, we got, uh, we got party go. bags. We'll breeze through these. <laughs> Everybody loves a good Super Bowl Who party. Who knows what's in them? Nothing um, better than going to a Super Bowl party and getting goodies. Yeah. Um, great uh, camera shot here by our, so, our producer, Chris. The spread. It's, it's, we got a bunch of stuff. So yeah. let's just dive in. So What do you want to do? What's this? We're just going to grab one? And, yeah, we'll, just, we'll open them up. All right, go ahead. And we'll see what's in here. And I imagine there's some betting-related <laughs> things that, to take away from it. Uh, the first one being a Gatorade bottle. Oh, I think you know where we're going with this one. Um, yeah, so the big, you know, one of the big prop bets uh, this time of year is the, what color will the liquid port on the winning coach be? Can you bet on this in, in American markets? Uh, no, sure. I don't believe so. That makes sense. But you so, can on, we use betonline.ag. Yeah, there's it's, enough uh, numbers yeah. floating around out there. Antigua or wherever yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you're probably not, like, I mean, yeah, if you had a Super Bowl party though and you want to. You want to start a book? Yeah. <laughs> Go right ahead. I do love that they, they call this the color of liquid, not Gatorade, because it could be water. It could be Powerade. Clear or I mean, plus. If anybody wants yeah, that's to sponsor the spread next yeah, year. Yeah, that's a fair point. We, don't, we hold both in high regard. Clear slash water is 8 to 1. The favorite is purple, plus 250. Uh, yellow slash green slash lime, plus 290. Blue, plus 325. Orange, plus 450. Red slash pink, plus 450. Do you like any of these? Uh, so the Chiefs, their last two Super Bowl wins, uh, the first one they had orange, second one they had purple. What do you get when you put those two colors together? Uh, like brown? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so I could, it didn't really hold up where I was going with that whole Barbecue thing. sauce? But I figured the closest to it is probably red, right? Yeah. Red, you never see it. Never see it. I don't... Two teams, red color scheme this year. Uh, let's get it. Let's get after it. Let's, let's buck the trend. That would right. make sense. I feel like there's probably good value there when you're talking about the fact that there's... Well, t- but, like, how does that... I don't know what that... Orange has been the most popular for the... <laughs> for dating back a little I bit. I think there. I might lean towards purple plus 250 as the favorite. Uh, I, don't, I forget who I heard this, but somebody made a good point saying they might tend to just base it off of the logo. And purple is in the okay. logo, right? What is the lo- purple in... Yeah, it's like a purplish... Uh, orange, so... Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, I guess I'll go reddish. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Purple and red. Yeah, purple plus two fifty. Your favorite color Gatorade, by the way. Uh, you ever see that like uh, oh, like Gatorade? It really just depends on the situation, right? I remember seeing like a tweet. It's yeah, like you had like your uh, like your yellow Gatorade is your like me- like the medicinal flavor. I, yeah, I I can't drink it. I don't like lose the coldest. There's too much sugar in it. But like yeah. sugar free blue, if I had to choose. So uh, okay, uh, my turn. Oh, you got a goodie bag. All right. Oh, I got a. Uh, what do we got? Valentine's Day heart. Oh, uh, what are those? Russell Stover? Chocolates, yeah. I got uh, some Skittles. Skittles. Heart. Skittles. Mashaan Lynch, are, beast we, mode. What are we going for here? Oh, uh, oh, okay. The little guide to Taylor Swift. There it is. So, uh, I guess we're, 
We're running out the Taylor Swift conversation here, huh? Finally. Yeah. Uh, do, do we have prop bets on uh, Taylor Swift that, you're, so, that you've got uh, eyed? I, uh, so I've got a few that I've got. Okay. Up. Lay them on. Um, I'll run through them. How long after the kickoff, uh, in terms of the game clock, will it be before Taylor Swift is shown? Okay. Over under seven and a half minutes. Game clock? Game clock. Juice I would go. It's used to the under, minus 200 to the under. So under means if it happens in the first seven and a half minutes? Correct. I think it's That's a lot because that we're building narratives here. We're in sure. showing narratives. I think Kansas City wins the toss. So whatever they, you know, Chiefs won the toss, parlayed with <laughs> first touchdown score. I don't know. But like, they do. They score a lot on their opening drive. That's why I just, so they, they're going to be moving down the field. They're yep. going to throw the ball to Travis Kelsey in that drive. The first time they throw the ball to Travis Kelsey, they cut to her. Yeah. And we like it. We don't mind. No, we love it, in fact. And we absolutely adore it. And for having this conversation only next ones, year, maybe I'll be a little more annoyed, but it's, it just could simply be a matter of whether it takes them too long to get down the field. Uh, but yeah. I do think if they are driving, I think there's probably going to be a couple catches the Mr. Kelsey mixed in there, and maybe you see her then. So <laughs> I'm I don't think you. they're just going to like randomly show her, They'd but I do think. Uh, let's well, they're going to be very cognizant of uh, how much and you know how so, often they show her. And did we talk about like this that. on the on the uh, show last week? How we don't like that? How like brands are just attaching themselves to this? Yeah. So this is a bet that you can have a bet online asking will American Airlines Flight 1989 or American Airlines Flight 87 be delayed? Which we don't like that. Like, it's just yeah, yeah, stop it. Yes, minus 160 is the prohibited favorite. No, plus 120. That's like, a tough brand, if you're, brand recognition there. Like. If you're giving me any plane to bet, I'm saying late. You're delayed. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I'll lay the 160. So, I don't I mean, care. Maybe that's the risk they didn't take into account. It's like, yeah, you can do these marketing things, but what, what happens if the door blows off on the, you know, the flight back? Like, uh, all of a sudden, you, you got egg on your face so yeah, i hope it's not delayed I hope everybody gets there on time um trying to think the other like, thing too like we you know our, our big thing last week was yeah. how frequently and when they actually show taylor swift like yeah. it's just like it's such a small portion of the actual game <laughs> so that's why how long will taylor swift be shown live over and under is 28 and a half seconds Yeesh. equal odds yeah so i don't even know how to go about are you thinking you got to go over for the super bowl Probably, but like 28 and a half seems like, like, are they, I got to know if they're factoring in a post game <laughs> celebration. Like, Travis Kelsey gets hurt and he's just like left oh, motionless yeah. on the field. That's uh, a nightmare. <laughs> do you want to get in uh, 10 to 1? This is uh, no offense to bet online. This number sucks. 10 to 1 to be Sean wearing a foam finger during the game. <laughs> yes, is 10 to 1. You can't even bet. Uh, will Clark Hunt mention her in a speech? Uh, no, is a prohibitive favorite. Will Swift be said by either team during play calling 10 to 1? Uh, and that's, right, so that's I don't have it. the number pulled up for this, but I know it like. You can bet on his best man in the wedding. <laughs> it changed dramatically from where it opened. Um, it's just the whole Will Travis Kelsey propose to Taylor Swift if the Chiefs win on the field? I'm looking to see. Yeah, no, any, I don't think so. No, yeah, I don't think so. The co- you can do the over under on the cost of engagement ring. I think it'd be sick, though. I hope uh, he does it. Chiefs win plus. Uh, Kelsey and Swift announced pregnancy. A little more uh, value. Well, I mean, thirty-three to one. It's going to be a, a a tough turnaround if the halftime show plays out like we <laughs> that is presented with last call week. back to last week. <laughs> you can bet on the uh, stones and the engagement ring does not include the the band. So, all I right, think we got to keep in mind that this is this they're still in the infancy of their relationship. Sure, they haven't really been together that yeah, long. So, that's true. let's talk of marriage. I know celebrities move fast, but let's pump the brakes a little bit. I hope it gets to that point. Sure, I just don't want these kids to rush in anything. You know. I hear you. All right, hit me. Uh, I think it's yours, right? It's my turn? Yeah. All did right. you go first? I don't know. Yeah, you Whatever. Did. Yeah, you did. Uh, we're getting to the nitty-gritty here. Uh, I got a couple creamers, it appears. Uh, Delight. Delight, I think is the Delight. Uh, Delight. Delight. I don't know Delight. going with that. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm focusing on Delight. Delight, okay. Uh, we got Fancy Feast. Fancy. Fancy cat. Oh, Fancy Feast. We're talking about Reba McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy is one of the greatest songs ever recorded. We got, by the way, we got uh, two variations of Fancy Feast. We have the Tenderloin Beef Feast, uh, and we have the Chicken Feast. So, very wholesome, all-American. Reba McIntyre singing the national anthem. So, yeah. I think it's where we're going with this over-under on her anthem. So, the number is currently set at 86 and a half seconds. 
with a lot of juice to the over. It's going to cost you. And the delight is cents. because she's just a delight. She's a delight. Way. I think we she's both love her. Truly Reba. a delight. I do she's love Reba. Like I said, treasure. Fancy is one of my favorite songs of all time. Yep. Uh, number, like I said, is over, over 86.5 seconds, which is a minute 26, minus 180, under plus 140. I'm on the under. I'm big time on the under. So I went back and looked on YouTube. Thank God. Uh, you can find Game 3 of the 1997 World Series. Reba sang the national anthem. And according to my calculations, it took her 83 seconds, which is a lot less than 86 and a half. Now, World Series versus Super Bowl, we're talking a difference of almost 30 years. Things change, so that's being accounted for. I have to imagine maybe somebody's got a little bit of information. That's why this is already juiced. I think she gets in, gets out. She I won't ham it. She will not wow. ham this up. No, we say that about a lot Reba. of people. But. She's Reba. She doesn't need to. <laughs> she doesn't need to. If there's ever a time to ham it, though. My only <clears throat> concern is, are we talking acapella or what kind of yeah, that's fair. accompaniment do we have here? Because if she's going straight acapella, I think it's a, it's a no, no-brainer deadlock under. If we start mixing in some guitars and, I don't know, triangle so, tambourines, did they, I think it, it might get a little dicey. Did you watch her uh, sitcom, by the way? Reba? So <clears throat> I vividly remember the theme song of that. Yeah. From like staying home sick from yeah. school, so I do wonder if they're <clears throat> she's coming back to TV. Maybe there's a you know first commercial hey, coming uh, out of the anthem is uh, coming this fall on CBS. Reba's back. Reba, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think my first like <clears throat> memory of Reba McIntyre is uh, her singing the national anthem in WrestleMania eight. Oh, I should have looked into that one too. Yeah, Damn. I don't know the numbers on it, but I just remember that, and then Shawn Michaels fought <laughs> Tito Santana. Of course, how can they? <laughs> so, all right, this is the last one. Last bag. All right. <clears throat> All right, so I got a Coca Cola product. Okay. Coke Zero, that's your uh, drink of choice. This is, I'm actually going to drink this afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice and warm now. And sliced peaches. Sliced peaches. Peaches. Coke. Georgia. Two things from Atlanta. Georgia. Georgia. Up. Oh, I think I know where you're Usher. Going. Usher, of course. <laughs> Who wouldn't put those two things together? Very subtle. Yeah. That's when I think Usher, I think of yeah. Coke Zero and canned peaches. <laughs> um, I guess you can bet on the, the first song, at least I bet online. There's a bunch of other stuff. One thing I did kind of circle here, uh, will Usher expose a nipple on stage? No, minus 170. Feels like there's some value there, a plus 130. Not be. nearly as big of an incident as maybe when Janet Jackson did sure. it. Far more socially and it's acceptable. it's only going to be one, right? We're not even... It only has to be one. He takes a shirt off. Who knows? I don't know. Like, the man is in impeccable shape. Oh, I understand yeah. it if he wants to take his shirt off. Could get hot top. too. Could be hot. It's the desert. Yeah. Vegas. Who knows what he's been up to? You know, he's, he could be hung over. He's going to get that shirt off. Let's see, Usher nipple. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... You can bet on the first song. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jeez, Louise. Uh, OMG is the odds-on favorite at minus 300, followed by My Way at 3-1. to one. Yeah, at 8-1. to one. That's my pick. Caught up, 8-1. to one. You got it bad, 9-1. to one. And DJ got us falling in love, 12-1. to one. I think there are only two ones that you can circle here. You know what's um, up? I, I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it has to start it. If yeah. I'm, yeah. 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 Yes. That's my, my hope. Uh, or DJ got us falling in love. Like, that's a... It's got to be something fast. Like, he can't start with You Got well, It Bad. That'd be a weird way to go. Yeah. Well, you know. I don't know the other songs. You know Lil John and uh, Ludacris are going to be there. Lil John is, uh, you can bet on that at Bet Online as well. I think it's he's like minus 200 or something to show up. Yeah. Good for those guys. I, 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 saw, uh, <laughs> I saw Ludacris in Vegas last year. Just walking around? Uh, no, like I went to a show. Oh, okay. It was at like some, he went on at like 2 o'clock in the morning. It was at like some nightclub that. In order to get to it, you basically walk through a mall. So, like, uh, obviously, one, one second you're in the middle of a food court, foot action, Panda Express. Next thing you know, boom, welcome to Atlanta. Lights <laughs> yeah. flashing everywhere. I was way past my bedtime, too. Well, so, I understand. Uh, but no, it was great. So, yeah, I think he shows up. I think you get, yeah. <clears throat> Six to one to perform a Taylor Swift song. There's not enough value no, there. I don't think that's going to happen. Just, um, gonna bet, bet responsibly here. Come on. Yeah. Can't go too, too carried away. We give a shout out to Taylor Swift. I wish you could like parlay that with the Taylor Swift song because I mean, if he's gonna play the song, he's gonna give her a shout out. And then, yeah, to your point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, no, excuse me. Breaking news: Caught Up is now a minus three hundred favorite. <sighs> OMG, this is why you, people tune in. OMG won the ticker. The ticker uh, is rolling. OMG is uh, just even money. My and way, five up. to one. Yeah, down to ten to one. You got a bad ten to one. Oh, so we're getting value on. We're that. getting yeah. value, baby. All right. 
Uh, also, Lil John minus 200, Ludacris minus 160 to show up. All right, cool. Uh, let me just run through a couple other uh, offshore books I, I was looking at. Um, the Puppy Bowl, Team Fluff is a minus 150 favorite. Not even really sure who sets that line. Uh, maybe that's just kind of looking at past uh, uh, trends. Which one is which? We ordered our dog some, or we ordered some coffee and they sent, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, whatever the orange one is. I'm on the orange one. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'll just run through some quick uh, game winning touchdown markets for the Puppy Bowl, not the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, correct. Patrick yeah. Mabones, yeah. six to one. Guy Ferrari, uh, 12 to one. Bob Barker, 16 to one. Have your pet spayed and neuter. Uh, Bark Purdy. 33 to 1 and Snack Prescott 40 to 1. So these are anytime touchdowns? No, these are winning touchdowns. A winning touchdowns. Because I don't know how this thing just goes until <laughs> it ends and it's like whoever scores last touchdown. I was going to say anytime touchdowns. This doesn't seem like very good odds. It's a market that I'd like to get into. Are you going to also bet on the, uh, the one I kind of looked at? First 49ers fan shown on TV. Um, Bailey is on that list, I think, uh, from the WWE. But I also, I like Keegan Michael Key. He's the favorite. But at plus 250, Key and Peel is on Paramount Plus. Uh, I think he did a Paramount Plus Super Bowl commercial a couple years back. CBS is under the Paramount umbrella. It just feels obvious that they're going to go to him first. Yeah. So uh, I also What's like your, Eric uh, Stone Street as first Chiefs fan. Not to belabor the point here, but the Puppy Bowl. Uh, you have a <laughs> how's your nar- What's your narrative for that game? How do you think that shakes out? Um, I think I don't know. <laughs> I think it's I think it's going to be a slower start than everybody is you think anticipating. So? Yeah, where does that game take place? <laughs> In the- uh, you got it. And you the gotta, bowels of Allegiant you gotta factor Stadium. in like well nap they have a kennel in the uh underneath in the concourse somewhere. nap times uh walks things like that the publicity Ooh. can get to them that tire too. them out a little bit yeah especially I, now that McBones is uh having to deal with the limelight I mean slow starter but Guy Ferrari twelve to one feels like the play there oh. all right I think yeah. that's it oh that's about did it. you want to look. We'll go through super fast. I have. I did, you had a list of uh, rapid fire questions. Yeah. We kind of you, you snuck them in there at the, the uh, like, final whistle, but I I think they're worth uh, literally exploring like real quick. Five seconds, yeah, at most. All right. Are these By the are, way, one random touchdown. I don't know. Is Kadarius Tony gonna play? No. Sounds like he. If you ask Kadarius Tony, he's the next coming of Jerry Rice. So I think he's gonna score a touchdown. Okay, I like that. <laughs> Mark that down. Rushing touchdown. All a right. Rushing touchdown. <laughs> Make sure you. Uh... How do you stop him from dropping the ball? Just put it right in the gut. <laughs> Parlay that was Snack Purdy um, or <laughs> Snack Prescott. Whatever. All right, is Brock Purdy already an elite quarterback? No, uh, no, and I don't even think he gets there with the Super Bowl. And, and it's not because of anything he's really done. I just I want to see it next season. It's a yeah. sample size thing for me. Of course, in that second year we've seen a lot of quarterbacks come out and struggle in that second year. So if he does it next year, then maybe but with a win. Really with a win, is Andy Reid the greatest coach of all time? No, I think he is. Wow. Uh, I think he's done it. He's had success at two places. Uh, the Super Bowl is keep adding to that. I know he's had great quarterbacks, but he's done it in two different places, which is more than Belichick can say. So I think it. Uh, see, I or think he's at least in the conversation. I think we're a sleeping much. a little bit on early Belichick. I think the narrative has sh- shifted a little too far. I think we underestimated yeah, fresh, his sure. overall impact in the first half of that dynasty. How good he was at getting them to the, you know the levels that they reached. What's the greatest uh, Super Bowl halftime show of all time? Uh, you too. Fair. Uh, Prince gets a lot of credit. Maybe this is recency bias. I did like the Dr. Dre Snoop Dogg one in LA. You know what I, I, I kind of like but Katy Perry. Katy Perry's good too. The left a lot shot. of memes. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. That, that, and like, that was like that type of stuff. Like that's, that's my sweet spot of humor. Uh, yeah. Like left shark and things of that, of that ilk. Uh, honorable mention Janet Jackson, <clears throat> Justin Timberlake. Uh, <laughs> what is, usher. what is the one snack you have to have for the Super Bowl? Cheez Its. Toasty no. Cheez Its, right? Um, Nachos, nachos, anything in like the see chip and dip family. I'm going chicken wings because nachos don't hold as well. You can eat a cold chicken wing; it still tastes relatively good. Um, should the day after Super Bowl be considered a national holiday or be changed to a national holiday? No, no, of course not. Work. It's part of the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah. You just, like I think it should be generally accepted that you might be a little groggy. Sure, of course. But we all just get. To I like it. it. I think it's Sunday, a bonding it's experience. Monday, yeah, I'm honest with you. Like yeah. we're all like, oh man, yeah. I'm I, whew, Hung tired. On. Like let's. But then we, we push on, and then Tuesday's a better. What's the, what does Patrick Mahomes' resume need to look like for him to be in the Brady conversation legitimately? How many more Super Bowls, I guess? Two, probably? <laughs> Honestly, I'm like ready to put him in there. Wow. Like, uh, in the conversation, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, if he wins this Sunday, 
we're we're getting there. Yeah, we're, we're yeah. very much getting there. He's still super young. Sure, he's but like, yeah, I left. guess two more. I think it's just like it's amazing. Like even when he's, you know, they haven't won a Super Bowl. It's just they're they're always there, yeah. and I see them being there for the foreseeable future. So it's just like in my mind, like he's already. I don't think there's a scenario where he falls off. So he's already in the conversation. Interesting. Uh, what is your favorite Taylor Swift song? Ooh. Uh, so look, I I feel like we've built up a lot of goodwill with the Taylor yeah. Swift community. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm probably gonna throw it all away right here. <laughs> but for me, like my my love and adulation for Taylor Swift is more about the hustle, I think, yeah. than the actual product. I don't know if I've really ever like listened to her songs and been like, that's a banger. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like, I, sure, she's got a, a few decent songs. Nothing that's really knocked my socks off. Yeah. I'm going to pick one and maybe say Bad Blood. Bad Blood's up there. I'm a country guy, so I do like her earlier stuff. So should have said no. Uh, Love Story, probably one. one Love Story's a classic. So, yeah. And, but, uh, like, I just, they're all kind of just, like, interchangeable. You hear them on the radio. Yeah. No, I did her new stuff, I don't get why. Whatever. It does not not the point. But, uh, again, love Taylor Swift. Love her. Love her. And I hope she finds love. And has love. What's the best Super Bowl you've ever seen? Uh, well, obviously a little bias, uh, being a Patriots fan, uh, <laughs> Patriots Seahawks was okay. my favorite of those Super Bowls. I also have a soft spot for Steelers Cardinals. That was a good one too. Yeah. That's a good I pick. I love that one. Uh, I'm going Patriots Seahawks as well. We will do something on this at some point, maybe in the off season. I think there's a case to be made. It's the most important, uh, noteworthy, most stakes football game ever played. Right. right? No, I, I agree with that. There, so. Also like. Those two teams are both loaded. Yeah. Like, it was the game was a-, a car crash left and right. Two really, really physical teams. It was awesome. So, yep. All right, Ricky, it's been a pleasure. Uh, it was awesome. We might be back again sooner than later, though. Who knows? Maybe next week. Uh, yeah. Know. So uh, thank you for joining. The, the, the hallways are talking. <laughs> yeah, we went a little too long, so we got to get out of here before you yelled at by our producers who have done a great job all season long. Appreciate them, uh, Chris, Liam, and Marissa. Uh, anything else, Ricky? Not for me, no. It's been all right. Year. Let's go eat some Cheez-Its. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl. Thank you for joining us uh, this week and every week uh, if you have been. So uh, enjoy the game. Hope you win all your bets. Goodbye.